Have you heard about the SECURE Act? Well, it took effect January 1st and has to do with your retirement account. Today's Your Dime sponsor, it's Wall Street Financial Group. Chief Retirement Strategist and Founder Zach Gray is here, as well as Duke Smith, the Investment Advisor Representative. So we're talking the SECURE Act, but um, I don't even know what that is, guys. I don't what either. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, do I need to know what it is? Well, you do need to know because it's going to be some changes that come along in your lifetime, at least at some point, at least by the age of 72. So there's a couple things that we'll talk about today, and it is some change up for those that might be watching us today. Okay. Is this affecting our retirement savings uh, in totality? Is it Social Security, 401ks? Like, what does this apply to, and how does it affect our lives? Well, for the most part, it has to do with your retirement savings. Now, that would be your tax-deferred investment, something like a 401k, an IRA. Maybe if you work at the university, you've got a 403b or a 457. Um, so those changes are really going to affect that. There's a few rules in there as far as um, some changes to small businesses and their availability for 401ks, um, as well as some for part-time employees. But the biggest thing it will affect is things like RMD age is going to change with this new SECURE Act, um, as well as some stretch IRA beneficiary designations. Okay, you used an acronym, and I don't know what the letters stand for. RMD stands for? That is, oh, I can see right there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Required minimum distributions. Yep. So I should look at the screen. <laughs> All right, so... What does that mean? <laughs> Sorry. Well, required minimum distributions is something that most people that are getting near 70 or in retirement have heard of before. If they have any tax-deferred savings, like a 401k or traditional IRA, some others that Duke rambled off, they're going to be forced to take some of those savings out. They are required to take a minimum of a certain amount. Got it. The difference is, is that that number's always been 70 and a half for years and years. It is now 72. But here's the but. If you've already started to take RMDs, you got to keep with the old plan or the old rules. So if you're 70 and a half in 2019, old rules apply. However, if you didn't reach that point, now you can push those RMDs back to 72. And that gives some flexibility. Maybe it allows it to grow a little bit more. Maybe it you know, gives some flexibility on converting some more dollars to something like a Roth IRA. But it just definitely changes the rules from what has been. So it's a good thing, could be. Yeah, definitely can be. At least gives us more flexibility. It also looks like it changes some of the ways that that money can be used as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that is uh, one of the changes that, that was made, not necessarily how you would use it during your lifetime, but if you pass away and leave it to your kids. Previously, you could establish something called a stretch beneficiary IRA to where once you pass away, your kids could take distributions based on their lifetime. Now under this new stretch beneficiary IRA, uh, now that that has been eliminated, they will have to take that money out in a 10-year period rather than being able to stretch those distributions out over a longer period of time. Got it. Hmm, I'm noticing something here that it also is um, affecting birth or adoption expenses. Is that right? What does that mean? Well, there's some flexibility now that's being built in. So as Duke mentioned, you know, after someone's lifetime, that's a big deal because you're going to have to force to take it in a much shorter window of time. That can mean a lot of tax implications. So instead of taking smaller draws, you might have to take much larger draws. While you're alive, though, there's more flexibility back to, you know, birth or adoption. There's going to be a $5,000 amount that you couldn't take from your guys' 401k or traditional IRA in the past without penalty. And now they're at least saying, hey, maybe there's something that comes along the way like that that's obviously, you know, a big life-changing moment, very costly moment. And at that point in time, it gives you some flexibility to draw some money back out of there and to, to not have a penalty alongside it. Nice. And so that, you want to buy a timeshare, not okay. <laughs> time Adopt a child. It is okay. Yes, adoption of the child. Maybe if you, yeah, you know, uh, it can work the rules a little bit, but you are correct. It's not for a new car. Got it. And it's not for the time shift. But it okay. is up to $10,000. Is that right? Correct. And so as you also look at some of the things that I don't necessarily know will affect the common person, Duke mentioned small business owners, more flexibility there. There's even some annuity options that would be some payout options that could be something that could, could also affect things. 
But I think kind of the three core components that we've touched on a little bit today is RMDs definitely being one of the big changes, the stretch beneficiary, or at least forcing you to that smaller time window. And then lastly, we didn't really touch on it yet, but to wrap up is there's no caps on when and how you can put money in. So if you're over 70, you can still put money in an IRA. If you're over 72, you can still put money in an IRA if you have that earned income, which is nice because before those rules did not apply there. Well, if we've proven anything, Heather and I, it's that this is a uh, tricky situation. Yeah. Not everyone understands it, except these guys do. So uh, if you have questions, we'll connect you with Wall Street Financial and uh, Duke and his team. You can just go to CILiving.tv. And Zach, I didn't mean to lead out Zach. <laughs> Today's CI Giving is sponsored by the Ford 66th Annual Indianapolis Boat Sport and Travel Show happening now through the 23rd at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. It's a great opportunity to explore the outdoors indoors. The winner will receive four admission passes. This is a prize value at $60, and if you want to enter, go to CILiving.tv.